This video goes out to Gaurav and he's got a question about duplicate data. Now this is kind of like a, a tricky question to deal with because there's kind of a few ways you can do it, right? So here's the, uh, here's the question and maybe I'll get my zoom tool so we can see. Right, so this is the data set, right? So you have student scores. Now the thing is, sometimes you're going to have duplicates like Ryan, Mona, and they could be completely different persons. But in Tableau, when you visualize something with duplicates, the scores are going to add. So if this is a percentage, no way you can get 198% score on a test, for example. So the question is, how do you split this and make it unique, right? So there's a few ways. Um, what I've done is I've created the Excel data like so, it's pretty easy, and then I brought it into Tableau like so. Now let me show you what happens. If I bring in each of their names, straight away I can see that there's no uniques in here compared to this one, right? So if we just sort this, right, you'll see Mona here and Ryan, right, with duplicate scores. Here it's not so because of how Tableau deals with data, right? It aggregates things, it combines them, it groups them. So now if I bring the marks in, it's going to aggregate those scores, and we'll put the label in, and you can see this 198, 196 issue. So the easiest way to do it is like this, right? So you add a column in Excel or whatever your data source is, and let's go order ID. And you can, and the way I do it, I usually just say order underscore one, two, three, four, five, one, right? Something like that. And then if you double click this, because you've got a string and a number in here, Excel tries to run with that number, right? So you can see if I double click on this drop down uh, on this fill handle, right? It tries to predict the next numbers. Now, the reason I put the zeros in is because if you just do one, it goes like that. And then when it gets to the next one, it goes like this and it's not, it doesn't work well because I think in terms of sorting, it thinks this is a 90. Right, because there's it's this part is empty here. Okay. So I like to make a vertically consistent. Okay, and that's the way I do it. So then if I save this, go into here and go refresh. Right, we're gonna see this order ID. And if I bring it into rows, it's gonna split the data. That's great, right? So the question is, does that solve our problem easily? Um, for this kind of data that's small, yeah, it's pretty easy. But what do you do if it's like huge? huge data sets, um, so huge that you can't even see them in Excel, right? You can't even view it in Excel, or you can't actually create this from the raw data. So for example, let's say you're extracting it out of Oracle or something or out of uh, SQL Server where you can maybe do some SQL beforehand to create this, right? Using some sort of row ID calculation, then maybe you have that option. A lot of people don't scratch my ear um, but a lot of people don't because like when it comes out of the system it's from a system that has already got a pre-designed report structure right so when it comes out it comes out like this so the other approach would be well can I create those row IDs automatically such that no matter how many I have in here whether it's 10 10 million 10 billion the formula will always apply so the I, I searched online and it seems like most people use the index function or the unique function, right? Which I actually think doesn't always work in certain situations, right? Because in unique, uh, using like the unique function or the, uh, sorry, the rank unique, you need some sort of numerical value to rank from, okay? So let me show you what that looks like. If I rank based on this value, ignoring this um, order ID, because we're pretending we don't have access to that. How do I delete this? Oh no, I just refresh. Nope, I forgot to save. Let's refresh. There we go, right? So this is kind of how it comes out of the system. So if I do a rank unique, right? Which is going to try and unique them, uh, trying to rank them based on a value. It doesn't really work if I just use this number. Okay, so if we go marks, okay. Right, it doesn't want to really. It's it's not really the best one to do it, right? All fields must be aggregated. So if I do sum of marks, which already doesn't make sense, why would you want to sum their marks, right? So we go OK, and we bring this in here as a discrete, right? So you can see even then it's not able to do it because there's no way for you to say decisively or a hundred percent that two Mayas with the same name will will always have different scores, 
you don't know that, right? So that method doesn't work. The other method is to use an index, right? So we try that index, okay? We go okay, we bring that in again, right? Make it discrete, and that's the problem with the index. Again, it can't tell the difference between the monas, okay? So after thinking about it and finding that no one had really a solution online, here's what I thought. We're going to play a game of probability, okay? So there is still a chance that it can happen, what I'm about to describe, but there's also, the chance is so small that it most likely will never happen in your lifetime. Okay, so here's the secret. I'm going to go into a calculated field. Actually, let's get rid of the other one. I just don't like mess. I'm going to create a calculated field. I'm going to call this random ID. Okay, and we're going to use the random function, like so. All right now if I go OK, it's going to create a random ID for the full data set. Okay, so if I open this up, see, it's going to create a different number for every single entry. But it's not that simple, right? So let's say I go into here and bring this random ID in. See how it's treating it sort of like a number? If I go discrete, see, it's, it's still aggregating. Okay, so maybe if we go dimension and go discrete, right? Still aggregating even though we have got no aggregation here. If I bring in name it's still aggregating. So how do we make it so it doesn't aggregate? Okay, so here's how you do it. I've had to clear it and I had a little bit of a computer issue so you'll kind of see it disappear suddenly. Um, here's how you do it. So you have your random ID function already. What we're going to do is we're going to add name to this. And the theory that I'm kind of going with is if we can make a number so unique that it will never repeat or have a really low chance of repeating, then we've basically created an, an, a, uh, an ID, right? A random, unique ID. There is a small chance that it will regenerate and have duplicates, but the chances are crazy low, okay? So here we go, string. Okay, so we're gonna convert this random number to a string as a starting point. Then we're going to concatenate it with a name. So the reason we have to do a string is because we're concatenating a string with a string. Okay, and we go OK. So now if I bring that random ID in, you're going to notice there's a lot more in here, and you'll see the names repeat. So you got Mona and Mona. And the idea is, if you can see here, the numbers are not the same, because that's what will have to happen in the formula for it to repeat, right? Two numbers exactly the same to repeat. Now what happens if we have multiple random numbers in succession, then the odds of it repeating are even less, right? Like, I'm guessing exponentially less. So let's just make this larger, actually. So if I go into the random ID and go edit, and we just copy this random part twice, right? It's even more unique. You want to go even further? We'll make it unique again, OK? And go OK. So now the odds of this repeating ever, even if the two monas get exactly the same score, are very rare. So now we can bring in these names, right? followed by the attribute function, right? So if I right click on name and go attribute, you'll see it expand. So without going to too much detail about attribute, it looks at the entire row of data and looks at you its uniqueness, all right? So that's from my understanding. I don't use attribute, attribute property very much, so I'm probably not kind of the best to ask about that, but there's heaps of documentation online if you wanna look into it. So you can see with the attribute function, it's actually split them up because this value is so unique. Okay, then we can bring in the scores. Right, so now we have something that makes a lot more sense and we can sort it. Right, you can see that this one is the highest and we need to keep this part in here. If I get rid of it, it's going to aggregate again. Okay, so what we need to do is we just hide it. Uh, we just hide it, hide it, hide it. I think it's this one, right? So you just click on that show header and it will make it disappear. And there you go. So that's one way you could approach that uniqueness. Now the good thing about this is, doesn't matter, doesn't matter how big your data set is, it will always do it. But here's the problem possibly in Gaurav's data set is, how do you know which Mona is which? 
So most likely in your data set, you're going to have some sort of unique identifier. In schools, you usually have some sort of student ID. In companies, you have like a client number or a, um, like an employee number or something like that. There usually already is an identifier. Otherwise, you need some way to tell them apart. Now, in the events that Mona, the two Monas have exactly the same last names, like two John Smiths, then that's where kind of that unique employer ID kind of comes in. But that's how I would attack the problem. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed. And if you want to learn more about Tableau, please see the description below and give me a like because it helps the channel. So see ya.